Hi there, welcome to the single page Laravel course. I'm sure you have a decent understanding of what a single page application is, um, but just so that we're on the same page, let's go through some quick basics. By default, Laravel applications are what we call server-side rendered. The way they work is pretty straightforward. The user requests the page and the server simply returns it. Any subsequent request made by the user will make the server generate and returns a whole new page. As you can see, the server takes care of everything. It takes care of processing the request, as well as rendering a page for our users. You can obviously have some JavaScript for those pages, but it is again the server's responsibility to provide it. On the other hand, we will build a single page application. The first request is very similar to the server-side rendered applications. The user requests a page and the server returns it. Simple as that. However, this time, the page contains all of the resources and all of the JavaScript that we need for our application to work independently. This is literally the single page. As a result, the first request is usually more expensive than a typical request in a server-side rendered application. However, from now on, any subsequent request will not generate new pages. Instead, the server and the client will only exchange the information they need via JSON objects. The server is now basically an API. That means it's actually the client's responsibility to update the application based on the information received by the server. So the browser does not need to refresh the page at every single interaction, and we can build much richer user experiences. Now, in between the SRA and the SPA, there is a variety of hybrid solutions that exist. You can see on the table that on one side, you have our traditional Laravel applications, and on the other side, you have SPAs. In between, however, you have things like static SRAs or SPAs with pre-rendering if you're using something like ViewPress. Now, I won't be talking about these hybrid techniques in this course, but my assumption is that if you know both sides of the range, you should be more comfortable understanding what's in the middle of it. Okay, so that was for the technology side of things. Now for the application that we'll be building, it kind of all started with a tweet. So a while ago, Sindri made a time lapse of his GitHub contributions, which I think looks really, really cool. By the way, if you don't know Sindri already, he's a very heavy open source contributor who is definitely worth following. Anyway, I wanted to do the same time lapse, so I started by running a cron job on my local machine. But the trouble is, from that cron job to work, my computer had to be awake, and it also had to be physically open. So obviously, every now and then, I would miss a day, and it would just kind of mess the entire thing. So I thought it would be really cool to have a little SaaS application that would do that for us, which is why I decided to build Paparazzi. It's a little application that enables us to schedule screenshots at a given frequency. As far as the models go, you basically have two. Um, you have the paparazzi, which has a name, a link to the page that we want to screenshot, a frequency, and so on. And then you have the shots, which are the actual screenshots. It's basically an abstraction for an image that keeps track of its parameters. And finally, you have the users, which can have multiple paparazzi. So yeah, it's a small app, but I think it will work perfectly to teach how to build a single page application. One little disclaimer I'd like to make is, as you can see, I've already pre-built this application to be better prepared, but that was using Laravel 5.8. At the time of this recording, Laravel 6 has just been released, so we'll definitely be using that instead. Um, also, I'm going to try my best to clearly define episodes so that they make sense on their own. But obviously, we will be building an application from scratch, so there is an element of continuity in this course, which is just not negligible. Okay, so on the next video, we'll actually get started and start coding.